Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. I feel very honored to be here. Today, I will share about setting multi cloud traffic management with Kamana. First, let me introduce myself. I'm Zhong Hushui, an open source engineer from Huawei. Previously, I worked on upstream Kubernetes community and a co-contributor in SIG API machinery. And since 2008, I joined Istio community and became the co-maintainer of Istio and a steering committee member. I like open source. If you are interested, please feel free to connect me in GitHub. Let's first look at the agenda of today. Today, my presentation includes three most critical parts. The first part, I will talk about the multi-cloud benefits and the disadvantages. Next, I will talk about Kamada, a young self project which handles multi-cloud workload orchestration with Kubernetes API. It is natively suitable for multi-cloud application management. The third, I will talk about multi-cloud traffic management. This may be the most tricky point user can face when adopting multi-cluster on multi-cloud. First, let's look at the multi-cloud, multi-cluster strategy is widely adopted. Let me do a quick explanation of multi-cloud. Multi-cloud is when an individual or organization uses more than one cloud provider for their IT needs. The approach enables companies to better support their business technology and service needs. This approach enables companies to better support their business technology and service reliability requirements while mitigating over-reliance on a single cloud provider that might not accomplish all tasks effectively. A multi-cloud strategy can encompass private, public, and hybrid clouds and allows business to seamlessly manage multi-providers and the virtual infrastructure performance while achieving great efficiency. As the figure indicates, 89% of the respondents report having a multi-cloud strategy. It is still the de facto standard, but the ways in which organizations arrive at multi-cloud vary depending on their needs and mix of providers chosen. Most are taking a hybrid approach. You can see at the figure, 80% of the respondents adopt hybrid hybrid cloud. Okay, why we choose multi-cloud? Speaking of multi-cloud benefits, it is commonly compared with single cloud. Uh, I listed four points here. One is avoid vendor locking. One of the most, uh, this is the most uh, persuasive multi-cloud benefits. It keeps organizations from being locked into one vendor or service provider. A multi-cloud app approach enables business to deploy multi-specialist services instead of relying on one vendor for all their software requirements. Uh, second, uh, meeting compliance requirements as data privacy regulation continue to ramp up the need for companies to maintain strict levels of compliance is increasing. Geographic locations need to be accounted for in order to satisfy regulations such as Europe's GDPR. Aside from company integrating its own on-premise data centers, a multi-cloud strategy is typically the most effective and efficient approach. Third, it enhances resilience. Outages can happen at any time for any cloud, which makes it very risky for organizations to rely, 
rely on one vendor alone. Multi-cloud strategy offers business improved security, better failover options, and enhanced disaster recovery. It ensures data storage resources are always available, making the organization cloud deploy deployment more resilient for the long term. The last point is improved flexibility and scalability. With data volumes increasing exponentially, multi-cloud architecture is an ideal solution for organizations looking to store and process, um, process their data. It enables business to scale their storage requirements up and down. Next, uh, let's look at the multi-cloud challenge. The first uh, is the management complexity. The more cloud vendors you work with, the more resources your IT, IT team has to manage. Most vendors have its own technology. Although Kubernetes is widely used, this is mitigated, but the distribution of workloads across multi-cloud is still a challenge. Second is the security concerns. The responsibilities of protecting data in the cloud is shared between your organization and cloud providers. Most vendors offer built-in cybersecurity tools to protect customer data. Nevertheless, nevertheless working with multi-cloud services creates additional security risks. Thus, you need a multi-layered security approach when working with several cloud hosting environments. It is also a good idea to carefully monitor your cloud resources and, and cooperate with trusted cybersecurity partners. The third is uh, communication across cloud. Different cloud may have its own private network. It is simple to communicate within one network. However, if clouds cross clouds, this could, this could uh, be a big problem. First, we need to figure out a way to make traffic flow across cluster, across cloud, like a single network. For this, the most reliable way is the direct connect, but it is very expensive. Uh, the fourth one is the monitoring system. Different cloud may provide its own APM. It's simple to use to monitor your own applications. But for multi-cloud, the monitoring system are not constant, consistent. So it would require multi-layer monitoring to unify multi-cloud monitoring system. So this is also a big challenge. Next, let's take a look at the challenge of managing multi-container clusters. Firstly, there are too many clusters if users want to manage their own clusters on multi-cloud. You need to create and manage the life cycle of the cluster and uh, even some repetitive setup and uh, fragmented API endpoints of different vendors. Uh, even if you use cloud vendor managed uh, Kubernetes services like GKE, EKS, or Huawei CCE, which have all passed the CNF conformance test, and they provide the consistent API as upstream Kubernetes. The cluster is totally hosted. Users are free of cluster life management. But there are still other challenges listed in the figure. First, it is the workload fragment. The second is the boundary of clusters. How to do the resource scheduling, how to make the application high available, and how to do the auto scaling. The third one is the vendor locking. If we use a commercial project, to manage the multi-cloud Kubernetes, we may be locked by the SaaS provider. Okay, let's introduce Kamada here. Kamada is open and cloud-native multi-cloud orchestration engine. 
easily to build infinitely scalable cluster pools with Kamada. Uh, use multi-cluster, multi-cloud clusters just like a single Kubernetes cluster. Why we choose Kubernetes uh, Kamada? Uh, I listed uh, six points here. One is uh, it is Kubernetes native API. Uh, it is uh, open and neutral. You can join the com community. And uh, you can use it to avoid vendor lock-in. It is out of box. You can use it directly. It provides fruitful multi-cluster scheduling policies uh, like uh, cluster affinity, multi-cluster splitting, rebalancing of the applications. It is uh, provide the central control plan. You can manage Kamada in a central center. Okay, next uh, look at the Kamada architecture. Kamada control plan consists of three components. One is the Kamada API server. It provides the Kubernetes-like API. The second one is Kamada control manager. Control manager includes several different controllers. Uh, I don't want to explain them one by one here. If you feel interested, please feel free to check out in the official website. The third is the Kamada scheduler. Scheduler is to schedule the resources uh, to different clusters uh, with the policy user provided. Uh, the etcd can store all the Kamada resources and uh, the Kamada control manager or scheduler will talk about talk to it directly. Oh sorry, we will talk to the Kamada API server to access them. Okay, next uh, let's look at the Kamada API workflow. This is a little little hard to understand, but let me introduce here. You can see here, Kamada API server API includes three kind of APIs. One is the resource templates. Uh, this is Kubernetes API, like uh, deployment service and, and uh, namespace and so on. The second is the uh, propagation policy. Propagation policy is used to define multi-class scheduling and spreading requirements. It is used to specify uh, which clusters you want to spread the resources to. The, sec the third API is override policy. Override policy provides standard alone API for specializing cluster relevant configuration automation. Uh, for example, we can use image prefix to override the different cloud uh, image registry. We can use story class, to, we can override the story class, storage class according to different cloud provider. The following diagram shows how Kamada resources are involved when propagating resources to member cluster. First, uh, it is the policy controller and uh, Kamada scheduler to bind the resources to different cluster workers. And then if binded, the worker will create the resources in member clusters. Okay, running multi-cluster application with Vanilla Kubernetes API Server, it is very simple as the example shows. Uh, look at the right side, we can define a Kubernetes native deployment just like uh, usage in single cluster. And uh, on the left side, 
we can see the policy propagation policy. This is used to specify to schedule schedule the deployments to three different zones. Okay, let's talk about the propagation policy in detail. Propagation policy includes two important specs. The first one is the resource select. It is used to match resources that the propagation policy will apply to. Here, it is very flexible. We can select one resource by name or, by, or even by label selector. Okay. The second one is the placement. It represents preferences of propagating resources. It has three sub uh, fields. Uh, first is the uh, cluster affinity. Uh, it can be defined to define the pref preferred cluster to go, uh, just like the uh, node affinity. The second one is the class tolerations. Uh, similar to pod tolerations and the node tens, we can define tolerations on member cluster. To, to, to make a reser reservation for special usage. And we can use the toler tolerations here to tolerate the tense. The last one is the spread constraints. The con constraints of spreading resources among memory clusters. Here, the example shows that we want to spread the resources to three different zones. Okay, uh, look at the resource customization among clusters using override policy. This example is to <coughs> um, do some customization of different different cluster deployment. Uh, we can look at here, we have three clusters, cluster one and class two located in DC1, which is an on-premise environment. Class 3 is a hosted public cloud Kubernetes cluster. To save image downloading bandwidth and latency, we may override the image registry for different cloud. And here, for the deployments in cluster 1 and class 2, we wanted to download the image from the from local registry. And for cloud for class 3, we want to download the image from the registry managed by cloud provider. We can use the example here to override them. Okay, let's take a look at typical multi-cloud traffic flow. Uh, multi-cloud traffic mainly contains two kinds of traffic. First, north-south traffic. It is originated from any user, which can come from anywhere on the world. Firstly, it goes through a load balancer. Could be a hardware device, F5, or software, LB, LVS. Then it goes to the ingress gateway before it enters a cluster. For north-south north -south traffic, I think it has no big difference with different with, with single cluster deployment. Second, it is east-west traffic across class for inner service communication. Application can be deployed in any cloud, in any cloud. Even one application can be deployed across clouds. Sometimes they need to communicate to each other. Then how can we do service discovery? How to build connect across cloud? How to make sure the traffic is secure? These are all the challenges of multi-cloud traffic management. Next, I will talk about them separately. Okay. Uh, here, as we uh, we can see, Kubernetes is widely adopted. We are talking about challenges based uh, on multi-cloud Kubernetes. 
First one is uh, network reachability. Uh, container network is unreachable between different clusters. Um, absolutely, we can have other ways to build connectivity, like uh, use direct connect. But it uh, costs some additional spending. Um, second, we can build a VPC peering. But uh, also, this is very complex. Second one, for native Kubernetes, there is no way to do service discovery. So we have to make use of ex external service registries to uh, reg register one service of remote clusters by hand, like uh, Eureka or Zookeeper. The third one is the uh, remote class service domain is unresolvable in local cluster. Kubernetes is only capable of resolving local cluster service for cluster for service spans across different clusters. It is resolvable, but remote service instance is hard to access because Kubernetes does service load balancing via IPT boss, which only redirect requests to local cluster service endpoints. The fourth is load balancing is round robin for Kubernetes and it is only handle L4 protocol. High level protocol it is hard to implement. The fifth point is uh, less secure. Even if the inter-cloud network is built it is very risky to talk with each other in plain text, especially through public internet. Let's look at the command we How we can solve these challenges? Uh, first, command can build inter cluster network connectivity based on Submarina. Submarina is a tool built to connect overload overlay networks of different Kubernetes clusters. The second way is Kamada can export and import services between clusters with multi-cluster service APIs. Multi-cluster API, multi service APIs aims for minimal additional configuration, making multi-cluster service as easy to use as one single cluster service and it leaves room for multiple implementation. The third is integrated with mature surface mesh solution like Istio. Istio is the most popular surface mesh project aimed to support application level management, especially on traffic management, their trust and observability. With the help of Istio, Kamada can seamlessly make East-West traffic flow between multi-cloud as native as single cluster with Istio. Layer 7 traffic like HTTP, gRPC could be well controlled. With Istio, the inter-cloud traffic is securely encrypted even in public internet. Next, we will focus mostly on Istio way to facilitate multi-cloud traffic management. Okay, the ETUA requires all the application injected with a sidecar, and the traffic in and out of them will be intercepted by sidecar. Then sidecar is responsible of traffic routing, load balancing, and encrypt. How does ETU achieve this? <coughs> According to different network models, uh, the behavior is a little different. In flat network, it still list watches all services and endpoints from underlying clusters managed by Kamada, and then generate the XDS with them, then push, then push the XDS to the sidecar. Sidecar can see the pod IP address of the remote cluster, so it can redirect the request simply to the pod IP address. And at the same time, the caller is unaware of this at all. For nine flat network, it still still watches all the services and the endpoints 
from underlying cluster and then generate and uh, push XDS to the sidecar. But the generated EDS does not contain the port IP address of remote clusters, but uh, the address of gateway. So sidecar redirects a re request to the remote cluster gateway. This is the biggest difference with flat network. Next, uh, look at uh, the DNS resolution Istio provided. Istio introduced the uh, DNS proxy for multi-cluster service resolve. Previously, we need an additional component, Istio Core DNS. It is not very friendly. It requires service entries created in to, to shadow the service services. Uh, Istio extends a new kind of XDS NDS to facilitate DNS resolve. NDS is used is used by DNS proxy to fetch DNS name tables from uh, Istio control plan, and then it builds DNS lookup table to serve DNS resolve from local application. The name table contains all the services across cl across clusters. For Kubernetes service, uh, we can resolve the remote cluster service to the IP address of the, to the address of the cluster IP. Okay, ne next uh, to take a look at the flat network. Uh, flat network also called the single network model. All the clusters resides in the same network and the port from class 1 can talk to port from class 2 directly. Such no gateway is needed and cross-cluster communication will not increase latency. All the capabilities of single clusters are inherited, such as load balancing, dynamic routing, and it has also Cons like uh, complexity to build connect and less secure as all the workloads are within a single network. There are no boundaries. And uh, it requires no overlapping service IP ranges from different clusters. Compared with flat network, let's take a look at the different networks. Services, service meshes can span different networks. Each cluster resides in a network. Port cannot talk directly to the other ports in the, the other clusters. It provides better isolation. Each cluster is independent, uh, more secure. Cross-cluster cross <coughs> communication must go through an east-west gateway. So the challenge is the cross cross-cluster service communication. Actually, it depends on the east-west gateway. It works in TS or pass-through mode, which requires a network filter SNI cluster to map the SNI passed from TLS handshake to the cluster names. And then the gateway will redirect the request to the destination cluster. Okay, this is all today's presentation. Let's have a recap of the presentation. First, uh, we talked about multi-cloud evolution and what challenge it bring about. In the second part, we talked about Kamada can do, what Kamada can do for multi-cloud. And the third part, we talked about uh, inter-cloud communication with Istio. I hope you can get a good knowledge of multi-cloud application with my presentation. Thank you. This is a QA time. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.